Um, so we are really blessed today to have a speaker who is one of us and uh, somebody who's a religious science min a minister and author and uh, a real wordsmith and punster. I'm sure you will enjoy Reverend Wayne Edmiston. Wow, what an introduction. And thank you for that second song, especially because it has a very deeper meaning because Mr. Disney fits prominently in the first book that I was helped to author. I, maybe later. <laughs> I find it ironic that the colors red, white, and blue stand for freedom until it's flashing behind you. <laughs> and I want to thank everyone for showing up. All of you are friends, and some are strangers who haven't become a friend yet. So we're all here for the same reason. Friendship, joy, love, and community. So this morning I'm going to share a little with you about some history of my road from new age to new thought and everything in between it and some very keeple key people who were involved in that process. <sighs> For without their love and guidance, I wouldn't be here standing today. But first, <laughs> before 1900, I'm going to quote from Unity's founder, his daily invocation. I am now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I acknowledge thy presence and thy power of blessed spirit. In thy divine wisdom now erase my mortal limitations and from thy pure substance of love bring into manifestation my world according to thy perfect law. Now, here's what he said for the 21st century. Upgrade. <laughs> I am the presence of pure being emanating the whole spirit of life, love, and wisdom. I am all that God is expressing from the point of me. I am presence and power of blessed spirit as I express divine wisdom. All thoughts of mortal limitation have no power over me. I am the substance and the power of pure love. Bringing into manifestation my world according to divine law. So this month's theme is play, right? When I see these words as a wordsmith, I think, well, what if I break these letters around or maybe juggle them a little bit and rearrange them, changing the value? Well, here's one, swims. If you turn swims upside down, it still swims. <laughs> and why does the word funeral start with fun? <laughs> Tell me that one, okay? And how appropriate is it for Unity's founder to be the name of Fillmore? <laughs> and where we collectively congregate to be with other like-minded fellow travelers, following new thought, ancient wisdom, via seating here, standing up here, or in Zoomland. <sighs> Shakespeare said, all the world's a play, 
stage and every actor a player in it. So welcome aboard. When one first enters this planet, we're currently on this third dimension of reality. And before we begin learning about words, we hear sounds. And they could be scary or pleasant. It's been said that when a baby is birthed into this plane, there are tears of joy surrounding him. And beyond the veil, there are tears of sadness, knowing he'll return or she'll return. Not my parents were Bob and Sylvia. So we enter act one of play. They raised me and gave me courage to make my world and my way in my world. Now, being an infant, not that I remember now, because it's sometime last millennium, this new experience confronted me with sights and sounds that were foreign to my eyes and ears. I had crossed some kind of a threshold, a veil, if you will, and I was now incapable of taking care of myself. I was helpless. Before that, I was elsewhere in another time-space continuum, ethereally, one with all that is. Now, this had to have been a real shock to my system. So what did I do? I started to pray. And then I had to remember that I chose this time to come in. And I ached to understood, to be understood. And I yearned to learn. <sighs> Pray, remember, ache, yearn. P-R-A-Y. Now over time, I grew, I adapted, I crawled, I ate, I walked, I run, I talked. All things normal for this event. Phase one of eternal life. This is where we spend years compromising how we pace ourselves, how we languish about using analog equipment, and then upgrade into the age of using our cellular technologies, ride or drive some sort of wheeled apparatus, and amend Whenever we expect, experience conflict, pain, pleasure, heartbreak, via change, in order to make our aliveness fairer, more accurate, more up-to-date, improvise, improve one's and adjust one's mindset, and lift the yoke of something that is oppressive or burdensome. Pace, language, amend, yoke. Play. Now also, with the advance of the prime directive, attempt to advance the species on this third planet from the sun. Regardless of what we discover, we must understand and truly believe that everyone here does the best job he or she can. Given what we know at the time, one's skills and abilities the resources available, and the situation at hand. Be impeccable with your words, your thoughts, and your deeds. I added those. Or as do unto others, as you would have them do unto you. Now, as we learn to stand our own two feet, feed ourselves, dress ourselves, although some of us were still learning, we pretend. Remember playing cops and robbers, robbers, cowboys and Indians, making forts from cardboard boxes, baking and tea time? One can much learn much through the teachings of an empty cup and saucer. 
This is the result. We learn and we allow from both sides of pain or joy the experience of being around our siblings, relatives, neighbors, ah, a few unsavory characters or two. And sometimes anger gets in the way. Now that's one letter away from danger. Or maybe guilt. These life-growing experiences send messages to our inner selves about misbehaving, judgment, and discernment. I remember that rope swing from across the creek. And I always heard the words, don't let go until you get to the other side. We also engage ourselves with either a yes or a no to be in the moment without regards to when it's time for dinner or bedtime. I call that causes and consequences. The outdoors was where one had the world of tree climbing, of experiencing Newton's law of gravity, <laughs> or riding a bike that didn't have brakes. So we pretend, we learn, we allow, and we saw, say yes. Another play. <sighs> During my time, we didn't have fast food. All of it was slow. And it was at a place called home. <laughs> Mom cooked dinner most every day. And when dad got home, we all sat around the dinner table. Now, us three boys would take turns setting it, clearing it, washing, drying, and putting the dishes away where they were kept. And if I didn't like what I saw on my plate, my mother would say, just try a bite. You might like it. Yeah. And you know, she was usually a right, except for liver and onions. The automatic dishwasher came to our home in the late 50s. Technology advanced us from listening to the radio to watching something called television. Now in New Thought Ancient Wisdom, we might consider that as meditation or medication for the soul. Now when it came to food, Myrtle Fillmore said this, get in the habit of truly thinking about what the, where the food came from every time you sit down to eat. And then thinking back to that, to spirit the great life that makes our vegetables and our fruits grow, there would come a time in our minds a great praise when we ate. Now the Fillmores were staunch vegetarians. I am a moderate omnivore. <laughs> My parents never drove me to school except to kindergarten. Now we lived some six blocks away from the elementary school where I grew up, so walking became the way. And when it was rainy, we wore galoshes and a raincoat and sometimes deliberately walk through the mud puddles on the way home. <laughs> I learned that early on. We had one telephone in the hallway, the black rotary dial, party line. And my parents had that phone for 50 years. It was Fireside 2, 1732. And the 1732 was the birthday of George Washington. So my mother really honed that in to me. <laughs> you see, my mother taught fifth grade for 20 years. 
she did astrology to every one of her students that were going to come into her class. So she knew what to expect. She was a member of Association and Association for Research and Enlightenment, the teachings from Edgar Cayce. Her passion was music and the fine arts. My dad was all about fixing things, camping, hunting, fishing, outside sports. And the Methodist church was my upbringing. And to this day, I remember the doxology be right before the offertory. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, you're good. I looked it up, Bishop Thomas Ken wrote that in 1674. Originally it was 14 stanzas. And it was called the Morning Hymn. Whew. Now it finally became shortened to four by 1709. I, I guess he talked slower then, I don't know. The tune for it came from a Huguenot, a French Protestant in 1551. And it was a way of thank you as an integral role in overall regimen of spirit, health, and fitness. And the Methodist Church early on, I also found out that I had a weakness. It was better to give than to receive. I thought it was, I always heard it that it was more, well, it was, let me retrace that. I interpreted it as it was better to give than receive, and so I blocked the receiving end. Yesterday, I looked up Act 20. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Where's the balance there? I'm still learning. Now, Charles Fillmore said this, man's bodily condition depends on his state of mind. No two persons the same age are exactly the same bodily condition. This shows the years do not make young man or old, for as he thinketh within himself, so is he. Regarding the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's the inner teachings of unity, of the Trinity, and of the science of mind. So I'm going to do a little quoting. God is the threefold in its nature, spirit, or self-knowing, yes, meaning the divine being whom we have always thought of and believed in, the being whom we have prayed and believed in and adored. God is law and action, meaning the way spirit works. And the law in this sense would be the servant of spirit. God as body, meaning spirit's manifestation. Every great religion and philosophy has taught this trinity, or as we really know it, the thing, absolute intelligence. The way it works is absolute law. And what it does is the result, the manifestation. So I've just given you the first 60 pages of the introduction of the textbook. And it's a pretty thick textbook. Time moves us ever forward. 
seeking to express ourselves in myriad ways, learning more about life, family, community, and our world at large. Well, since I was a member of the Methodist youth family, that was us in high school. Somebody in my senior year brought on a Ouija board. <laughs> and it was Sunday night, and I used it. What came forth from that was that I would be married twice. Her name was Sherry, C-H-E-R-R-I, and I'd have two children. The next week, the Ouija board was not there anymore. <laughs> the uh, youth pastor decided that was probably not very appropriate at the time. <sighs> so we learn to protect what is near and dear. We love, honor, and respect others as we move through occupations, living conditions, and familial relationships. We attend offerings of different viewpoints about life, delving into activities that embrace our wholeness, and yodel with other like-minded peoples to embrace or fracture or smooth the measurement of sound through our vocal ensembles. That is, what we do here, led by our musical impressiano, impressiano who art, artfully orchestrates our musical abilities and extra, extrapolates desired vocal annotations, someone's called play. Oh, that's singing. <sighs> Junior high school started. That's where I met Sherry. I was a 12-year-old snot rose kid, according to her mother. And I was a little loudmouth. Uh, we were in the same grade. Didn't have any classes together, except choir. <sighs> the flies are with us, too. Life moved on, I graduated, went to college, became a senior in 1965. And that November, there was an announcement. They were eliminating all student deferments. So I said, okay, I'm going to join the service. And I'll come back and I'll live on, work on the GI Bill. So I went to base training. Two weeks into base training, I got the letter back that said, you got your student deferment. <laughs> so you don't go to your drill instructor and say, well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going to defer that and go back and finish, graduate so I can become a pilot or an officer. Well, that didn't happen. So. He, Instead, I worked on the airplanes and the jet engines and became a crew chief. 1968 came around, Tet Offensive. I was stationed at Fresno, and I made the decision that I wanted to do something more for my country. Got on the plane December 31st of that same year. As soon as we hit the international date line, the pilot came on and said, I want to welcome you to 1969. Saved you a lot of headache because you're on the plane with me. Now, get ready, we're landing. So, Saigon. 11 months and seven days, I returned, which was on December the 7th. Very happy. 
three years, seven months, 27 days, and four minutes was the time that I spent. But I really didn't keep a lot of track of time for active service. <laughs> I finished, got my BA, and then started working on my teaching credential. Then the 10 year class reunion came around. That's when I remet Sherry. Act two started then. It was in the 70s and the 80s when we watched Sunday broadcasts of the Unity Church in Sacramento. Sometimes it was a religious church in La Jolla and Terry Cole Whitaker was at the helm. I knew of the Daily Word and I knew of the Creative Thought magazine and Unity's 24 hour prayer line. And I used it a number of times. Thank you, Brian. You might have been on that line. I don't know. At that time, could be. At that time, I was considered active in New Age. Crystals, UFOs, channeling, ghost hunting, psychic phenomenon, past life regressions. Now, some call it pseudoscience. Two days before Christmas in 1989, my life irrevocably, irrevocably, changed dramatically and irrevocably. That's when I lost Sherry. I was unemployed, living at an elevation of 5,000 feet in Westwood, California, and I had been substitute teaching in the schools there and also the state prison. Four months later, I was invited to a place called Corcoran. And I went down, I interviewed. The interview consisted of four words from the associate warden. When can you start? <laughs> So I gave him two weeks, came back up to Westwood, which is an eight hour drive, packed up, had a little dog with me. And as I was leaving, I turned around to look at the house and I looked up to the sky and okay, spirit, universe, when am I coming back? And I heard distinctly eight months. So I went to Corcoran, did my first week teaching. They actually had me as the senior librarian instead of teaching. Whole new experience. Looked in the yellow pages of the, the book to find a like-minded community. And there were two in Visalia, Unity and Religious Science. Well, the Religious Science met at the Elks Lodge, so I knew I could find that, and I went there. I met Jackie there. <sighs> she was a practitioner in training. And 15 months later, we got married. And then learning began in earnest. That's <laughs> Ernest Holmes. Charles Fillmore said this, you must first enter into the understanding that God, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient is the source, and that you can draw on this source without limit. Started taking classes, and the first year teacher happened to be Jackie. <laughs> the other years was the regular minister. We moved back to Visalia. Actually, eight months later, I had moved back up to Westwood. She came up later, 
we were there three years and then came back. I'm going to fast forward to 2004. Jack and I had been orchestrating our ministry in San Luis Obispo since summer of 1998. And I was fiddling with the meaning of getting deeper into the stillness of my inner beingness. And what came forth from that became a poetic framing I'll call deeper, deeper, still. In the stillness, there is movement. In the silence, there is sound. In the sweet surrender is the gift. I am one with God. Go deeper, deeper still. In the stillness, I am movement. In the silence, I am sound. In surrender, I am the gift. I am one with God. Go deeper, deeper, still. In the one there are many, behind the cloud there is the sun. In forgiveness comes the healing, I am one in God. Go deeper, deeper still. Of the many I am one, behind the cloud I am the sun. In forgiving I am healed, I am one with God. Go deeper, deeper. Still, look inside and see. The beauty there is you, is me. The life is happening with you and for you, not to you. Your mind is a garden, your thoughts are seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow Good for you. From the Science of Mind, page 469. We are surrounded by a spirit of living intelligence and eternal givingness, love, goodness, and power that wishes to express itself through us. There is a divine urge within, ever pushing us forward to the goal. We are also surrounded by an immutable law of cause and effect. And because our individuality and the necessity of experience in order to come to a realization of what and who we are, we are subjected to the causes which we have set in motion. So as individuals, we can experience only what we really believe and act upon in having a well-balanced life experience, we let our minds take us from inspiration to action, from contemplation to accomplishment, and from affirmative prayer to performance and transformation. Let us feel that our purposes are both animated and inspired from the on high. And then let us go Fourth, then make our dream come true in human experience. With an invisible intelligence to guide and an immutable law to direct, let us take our place in any legitimate activity and thus cause our dreams to come to full fruition. Fillmore said this, the true church is not made of creeds or forms, nor it is contained in walls of wood and stone. The heart of man is its temple, and the spirit of truth is the one guide into all truth. When men learn to turn within the spirit of truth, who is in each one of us for his light and inspiration? The differences between churches of man will be eliminated, and the one church will be recognized. Now, has anyone here read the book from Pam Grout called E squared, nine do-it-yourself energy experience to prove your thoughts create your reality, published in 2013. It's considered a lab manual to prove that once and for all that reality is malleable, that consciousness trumps matter, and that you shape your life with your mind. And you impact the field of infinite possibilities and draw from it according to your beliefs and expectations. 
Now she set up nine experiments and I'm just gonna share the first one with you only. In 48 hours time, you're gonna pick a picture. Doesn't even have to be a picture, but it's either an animal, a bird, or an insect of some kind. Picture that, look for it, give it 48 hours. See how many times you see that. Well, Jackie picked the dragonfly. And we looked and searched for 48 hours and didn't find it. A couple days later, when she opened her laptop to log in, her face page was that dragonfly. <laughs> and it had been there all along. So sometimes we are just too invested in, in trying to catch it. That's okay. Pam has also published the Course of Miracles. Did you know that? It's a starter kit for renewing your mind and therefore the world in January of 2020. She said it is, well, it is profound, deeply moving, and is boring to read as a bookshelf assembly manual. That's the original concept. Now, how many here and in Zoom land have one? Zoom, that, that Zoom land. She's rewritten the 365 lessons at the heart of the course. And unlike the original, it's user friendly, it's accessible and easy for one to understand. She drills down the course's essential message and meaning grounded in, in everyday life in a way that's bound to stick. The lessons blend eternal truths with pop culture and personal stories that are laugh out loud, funny, deeply stirring, often at the same time. And I was continued to continue writing. The first book was originally a screenplay developed by Sherry because she, in her early age, had met, well, she didn't meet Walt Disney, but she had an eye experience going on and he was the donator to the ophthalmologist. And she said, I'm going to do something to pay it forward. That book came out, then it sat in my garage for 30 years. Eventually, I made it into a book. And then with Jackie's help, my second book arrived because I had been attending Temple of the People as well, teachings by Lavatsky. Similar information. And then I had a Science of Mind practitioner who was the editor of both of them. And then April 2021, again, the inevitable happened and my life has changed irreparably. I became a widower again. So now, act four. I'm downsizing from the last 19 years of where I've been living, seeking another dwelling experience. According to my wishes, thoughts, and dreams. And I'm open to and receive divine mind guidance. So now we pick up and pack everything, leave behind which no longer serves my highest and best interests, allow spirit to be my guidance statement, say yes to my next steps in life, the journey of discovery in, continues anew. That's a new play. And I'm here now recognizing the main characters in my life's journey who have profoundly influenced me the most and they've been women. With my eternal gratitude and love, thank you, Mom, Sylvia Edmiston, for bringing me into this world of effects. To Sherry Plaster Edmiston, you taught me about what is beyond what we normally see, hear, and feel. 
And to Jackie Rosemnist, and thank you for induce, introducing me to the New Thought Ancient Wisdom teachings. Your compassion and understanding, your loving nature, and consummate guidance. All of you are forever embedded in my heart, mind, and soul. I may be older now in years, and these memories are embedded and come up reminding me of my youthful innocence and the time growing up, and my deep abiding appreciation Without them, without them, I would not be the same person giving this Sunday morning talk that has morphed into all sorts of areas. See, Sundays at one spiritual center are like the hors d'oeuvres, the meat, the potatoes, and the vegetables are when you decide to up your game and take classes. So here's a word for today. The meaning is this, it's a pure, well-balanced mind, a wonderful spirit. You know what? E-U-N-O-I-A. It's also the shortest word in the English language that contains all the vowels. If you replace W with a T in what, where, and when, you get the answer to each of them. That, there, and them. From my favorite author, quote, under certain circumstances, profanity provides a relief denied even to prayer. Mark Twain. <laughs> now, years ago, Jack, me, Jackie asked me about when it's my turn to ascend beyond the veil. And both of us are watching and waiting to greet you. How are you going to handle that? That's the $64,000 question, isn't it? So may your spirits be uplifted, your life greatly enhanced, your joy be upheld with love and laughter. And so it is.